So traditionally, the large power stations were a mixture of baseload power stations that supplied energy 24-7 uh, throughout the day on a constant basis. And these uh, power stations were very um, efficient and economic, and uh, they uh, produced the power um, across the whole of the day. In between, as the demand picks up and the requirement for more energy and more power um, increases, then we had uh, things like gas turbines and some of the pumped hydro uh, stations uh, being able to flow electricity back onto the network uh, at a very quick response. And those um, ramping up and down uh, helped balance the network. Uh, and all that control and um, the operation of those power stations is undertaken by the transmission system operator. Uh, so in, this, in the UK, uh, that is uh, National Grid and they ensure that there is a sufficient amount of um, generation on the network to balance with the demand. Uh, what we've started to see now is a more significant amount of uh, embedded uh, generation, particularly renewables, which is very intermittent in nature. So because of all the changes on the distribution network, we've seen a lot more renewables connected onto, the, onto those networks, and the intermittent nature of those means that we're having a, a harder job to balance the electricity. Um, because the, this uh, conventionally happens at a transmission level on a, on a national basis, the regional electricity companies um, that operate the distribution networks, they're having to um, up their game and play a much more active part in managing those networks. Uh, so here at Western Power Distribution, we um, have uh, visibility of all the generation in our area and we're and beginning to, to onto the road of becoming a distribution system operator. So that means not just acting and operating a passive network, but increasingly becoming an active operator. So balancing the generation on a local level and demand and making sure that we are forecasting and predicting uh, the energy needs for our local users and making sure that we have generation in the area um, to be able to fulfill those needs as much as possible. Um, uh, things that I think that, that people need to look at is what power aggregators can do for you. And, and I, I've got an allocated supply on this site. There's nothing charging on this site now, is there? Well, that I've got an allocated supply of 960 kVA from WPD. So no one else can take that supply from the power station. It's just buzzing around. So I, you know, in the future, what I want to do is I want to say to um, a power aggregator, you can take all this power in the day, reserve it for someone else, I won't need it till 11 o'clock at night. And you know, you can make money from by doing that. And, and you can also alleviate pressure on the grid. So to power all the electric vehicles, we're obviously going to need to supply a lot more energy into the system, um, depending on, on um, the requirements for how many megawatt hours are required for those electric vehicles and how efficient they are. Um, it may vary, uh, but I think current projections are that once we reach a, um, a penetration, um, the, the fairly high penetrations of electric vehicles, then we may need another 10% worth of um, energy um, supplied uh, across the whole of the UK. Um, uh, uh, throughout the year. Um, so a 10% energy uplift um, is still well within the, um, the, the margin of surplus um, generation capacity that we have with, within the UK. So we're not going to need to build, you know, significantly build any new generation capability in the short to medium term. Um, but obviously we're going to need to build that up. So understanding what the, uh, the likely um, trajectory and uptake of those vehicles is really important when we're starting to plan the energy system. So uh, to date the generation mix of, in the UK has predominantly been um, affected by the incentives and these are national incentives um, that uh, stimulate the installation of particular technologies, you know, wind and solar in certain areas. Um, these uh, have definitely increased the amount of renewables that there are in the UK, um, but haven't really done so um, where it's locally needed. So there's no geographic incentive for particular people to um, install their generation in particular areas where the demand is required. Um, what we're starting to see now is a shift to, um, for distribution network operators to provide more um, signals and incentives for businesses and, um, and companies and generation installers to locate their equipment uh, closer towards demand so that they can be locally balanced.